Right, so Tony Blair, he of the all too common rare intervention, he of the dodgy dossiers, he of all people with his history in the Middle East, both in terms of the Iraq war and following his time as Prime Minister as a special envoy to the Middle East, has a lot of fingers and a lot of pies out there. But a track record of doing nothing but making a bigger mess of things when it comes to foreign policy. Keir Starmer's idol as he is, is the last person you want anywhere near this situation in Israel and Gaza right now. But guess where he is, and his rictus grin have cropped up now. Yep, Blair's in Israel. He's there, it is alleged, to discuss what is being reported as day after issues. The what do we do with Gaza after the war finishes scenario. From the Israeli perspective, obviously. So the question is, with him meeting with Israel's leaders and not with Palestinian ones, at least that is not being reported and perhaps also isn't surprising. What exactly is he up to? Because seeing what Israel have done over the last 11 weeks and heading to court as they now are thanks to South Africa, a cynic might think this amounts to Blair potentially getting involved in ethnic cleansing. Right, so Tony Blair is back in the Middle East, it is being reported. But actually he's been active there for a few months, building links between Netanyahu's genocidal government and Keir Starmer's Labour Party, you see. Very much cast in the same mould as Blair's government as that is, but likely to be so much worse. If Starmer is the sort of person who wants to build diplomatic connections to someone like Benjamin Netanyahu, that Zionist without qualification as Starmer is, why the hell would you want him to run the country? But therein is the fight so many of us have had, who have repeatedly pointed out issues such as this. Anyway, now news has broken according to Israel's Channel 12, though source material for these allegations, it has to be said, is a little bit iffy, that Blair might be aiding Netanyahu and Israel in the search for somewhere to send Gazan refugees. The inference being, there will be no Gaza for them to return to when all is said and done. So, what is being alluded to here then is clearly ethnic cleansing, it would appear. Surely that is what they are saying, is it not? Is Blair involving himself in this? Well, a spokesperson for him has vehemently denied that. Channel 12 published this statement saying, the reports that Tony Blair has something to do with voluntary evacuation are not true. There was no such discussion and he does not intend to consider it either. So, perhaps there's no story here then? Well, this statement was published alongside claims by Channel 12 to the contrary. And media outlets don't tend to contradict themselves on purpose in their own articles if there's no smoke without fire. Though it is worth noting that Channel 12 mentioned no source for this story, hence the iffiness associated with it a little bit. Nonetheless, it has been picked up by the much larger Times of Israel as well, and they've written on this story. Former British Prime Minister Tony Blair is reportedly being eyed by Israeli leaders to serve as the mediator between Jerusalem and moderate Arab countries on post-war Gaza and a controversial Israeli aim of having other nations absorb residents of Gaza who leave the Strip. Blair arrived in Israel last week and met with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and War Cabinet Minister Benny Gantz. Channel 12 news reports without citing a source. The report says that if the plan materialises, Blair will be in charge of checking the option of countries receiving Gazan refugees. The report development comes as the government is yet to discuss the fate of Gaza after the ongoing war, as planned discussions have been delayed by Netanyahu for fears of sparking a coalition crisis. Now you read that two things spring to my mind. One is Blair's own track record in the Middle East, and two, the brazenness of this far-right Netanyahu-led coalition Israeli government. On the first point, Blair has got an appalling track record in the Middle East. The Iraq war is what everyone automatically thinks of. He might be telling the truth about having no involvement in resettling Gazans elsewhere, but he also told us that well, weapons of mass destruction in Iraq is a pretext to go into war there with America. If that doesn't eternally undermine anything he ever says ever again, especially on matters pertaining to the Middle East, I don't know what does. So I find the claims by Channel 12 believable, certainly, but I do want to see more on this, and I do want to see it evidenced. Blair's time as Special Envoy to the Middle East meant he has built up good relationships with some nations, and less so with others, mainly because he is seen as being too close to Israel of all. So when it comes to Israel, his impartiality and his agenda become all the more questionable as well. But on the second point, Netanyahu is completely beholden right now to his hard right coalition partners in government, and they want the Gaza Strip for more of their settlers. So no longer is any of these attacks about retaliation for October 7th, now they are admitting what so many of us have thought for weeks now, that this is 
just a land grab and they've just taken the opportunity and used October 7th as a pretext for that. They are pushing for resettlement of Gazans elsewhere. There has been a lot of talk about pushing them into the Sinai Desert in Egypt, a region regarded as unsafe because of various militant factions who operate there, but which various Israeli spokespeople have considered an option. They've been quite keen on this in Israel for quite a while. A couple of small problems over there. You're talking about sending 2.2 million displaced people into the desert. There's nothing there. They require infrastructure and they are expected to become Egypt's problem. Egypt have a say in that. But not only that, the big elephant in the room is that this is forced movement of people. People who have already been forced to move south in the Gaza Strip to still be attacked anyway as they have been, despite being told, oh, go south, it's a safe place for you to go. This is ethnic cleansing. This is against international law again. And Israel are already on their way to the International Court of Justice over this, and then some. The alternative to that, of course, is to have other nations absorb the Gazan population. And this is what Blair is rumoured to be being involved in. I dare say few of them would be keen on that. For one, it would be enabling Israel to ethnically cleanse Gaza, giving them permission for that effectively. The people of Gaza already have their own land under occupation, which people want to see lifted. The last thing anyone wants to see right now except for those ardent Zionist head cases is for Israel to seize it assimilate it and settle it all in violation of international law after all where would that end then Gaza today the West Bank tomorrow the Golan Heights the day after that Lebanon next maybe if Israel can get other nations taking Palestinians in so they can seize their lands and their homes what's to stop them keeping on going of course they're going to do that surely where will it end this isn't a two-state solution, is it, either, as this country is still supposed to be in favour of, as Keir Starmer wetly still claimed to support in his New Year's speech yesterday. This is a one-state solution entirely as Israel want. It's letting them have their way despite everything they are doing. Functionally, the one thing we do know with certainty is that Blair is in Israel, and he's having conversations with the Israeli leadership. We know he's been building bridges for months between Netanyahu and Starmer. This could just be more of that. But the fact Israeli media outlets are reporting otherwise shouldn't be ignored. This is Tony Blair we're talking about, after all. When does he do anything not ultimately in his own interests? Well, comment is already being passed on this, of course. Trita Parsi, who is the 2010 recipient of the Grawmeyer Award for Ideas Improving the World Order. That's an award you might not have heard of. I certainly hadn't. So somebody with a few ideas on such things, though, said of this news, who do you turn to when you want a professional to help you with genocide and ethnic cleansing? Tony Blair, of course. Well, he's not pulling any punches on that, is he? Cage International, which is an NGO on counter-terrorism and locating prisoners seized during times of war who've gone missing, also passed comment on this news, saying, This war criminal has to be arrested. The world didn't hold Tony Blair to account for his war crimes in Iraq. Now he is aiding ethnic cleansing and genocide by colonial settlers in Palestine. And the always excellent Middle East Eye outlet have had their say too, saying, Tony Blair recently met with Netanyahu and Gantz to go over the possibility of the former British leader taking charge of where Palestinian refugees from Gaza could be relocated, reported Israel's Channel 12. And this comment here by Ashish Prasar, somebody who used to work for Tony Blair. So who knows him best of all? Probably the most on point in which case. And he said of this news, as a former employee of Tony Blair, I can tell you that as the Middle East peace envoy, he never looked for a settlement that would be good for Palestinians and has no business making decisions about Palestinian lives going forwards. Well, that isn't that the truth. Let's just end this video with where we're at right now as the backdrop to what Blair is allegedly doing here. Almost the entire population of Gaza has been displaced. Nearly 30,000 people are dead. Nearly 11,000 are children. Thousands more are missing, presumed buried under rubble. That death toll can only possibly rise. Netanyahu has said he's going to continue this war of his for months. So in what way can this possibly still be seen as retaliation for October 7th? And what is Blair genuinely doing? Because it isn't calming the rhetoric, that's for sure. Netanyahu now wants to control the Gaza-Egypt border, which he has no right to. A border crossing is of no importance except to keep people under subjugation and forced imprisonment to maintain the security of the largest open-air concentration camp in the world, which is the Gaza Strip. His finance minister and one of his hard-right coalition party leaders, who he has to keep sweet, Bezalel Smotrich, has said as recently as just Saturday that there will be an exodus of Palestinians and instead Israelis will live in the Gaza Strip. 
Ethnic cleansing by their own admission. And Blair is out there talking to them about something. He really ought to come clean and tell us what, if it's not this, in which case. So if not ethnic cleansing, perhaps elaborate for us, Tone. Because if you won't, well, of him, we're always going to think the worst, aren't we? And it's not just in the Middle East Blair's malign influences at work, because back here, in another one of those all too common rare interventions, he said as recently as July gone that we're spending too much on public services. Too much on them. Is that what you think? What you are? Very much setting Starmer's agenda for him, though, isn't it? As this video here demonstrates, and you should very much watch it if you despise Blair but are thinking about backing Starmer. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.